Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video I wanted to show you some of the basics of using player controllers and box colliders inside of Unity so that your player can move around and so that it can collide with other 2D objects inside of your game. So you're going to notice uh, immediately on the inspector I have a few new scripts that have been added um, basically to my game object and I don't want you to worry too much we're not going to be coding that right now so what you can do is go over to the asset store and search 2d player controller you're going to want the one by Marcus Stab to get the same uh, basically thing we have going on here import that and attach the player script to your main character game object and then if you want to be able to take import, add in the player input script. You won't have to do really anything else than that to get basic functionality. So that in itself takes care of all that. And it even automatically adds a box collider and a controller 2D script here. So uh, how collisions work in Unity 2D is that when you have, uh, let's say, a box collider on your player and you have another game object which also has a collider of some kind. It doesn't necessarily need to be box, it can also be circle collider. Um, the different types of colliders, their purpose is just to define boundaries. So if you have a circular object, uh, although the sprite may have originally been a square image, but you're not counting the transparent pixels and it's a circle image, then you probably want to use a circle collider. But anyway, when one of these colliders comes into contact with another collider, uh, the model behavior scripts are going to basically uh, call their on collision 2D method, I believe it's called. And when you're scripting, or in this case, when Marcus Stebb, the creator of this uh, 2D player controller, was scripting it, that allows you to make it do whatever you want when those two things come into contact. So in this case, um, with this controller 2D script, what it does is when it comes into collision with anything on the collision mask, in this case, obstacle, it's going to stop it. Um, basically, how it sees it is that this fence here, because the fence up here in layer is on the obstacle layer, and it's checking for collisions on the obstacle layer, it's going to see that as a physical game object that it's going to interact with. So we'll be able to stand on this fence, uh, but otherwise, uh, it's going to be affected by gravity and this character would fall off endlessly until we stop the game. So the only thing stopping it is this guy right here. I know that was a lot to take in, um, but we'll just go ahead and play this and hopefully that'll give you an idea of what's actually going on behind the scenes. So I'll hit play here. And what you'll notice is that the character immediately falls on top of the fence, but it does not pass through it. Now, because, we, uh, uh, because I also attached the player input script, uh, WASD movement and spacebar also work for jumping and moving around, which are default controls inside of Unity. It's very possible uh, to set your own controls, and you probably, in many cases, want to allow your player to set their own controls later on. Uh, but that's what we got going on there. And as I mentioned, if we fall off the edge, he's gone forever and he's not coming back. So that's working exactly how we uh, expected. And so in order to get that player script over here, I'll just remove it and I will show you one more time. So we have to remove player input first, I believe, and then controller 2D, or the player script rather. So we'll remove that. Controller 2D and box collider. So when you input the 2D platformer controller package into your project, it's going to have its own folder and you just be looking for the scripts directory and we can drag these scripts onto our character. So select the game object, drag this, uh, the script into the inspector and it'll automatically create the collider, the collider 2D and the player there. Um, and then we also want to add player input so that it can move around. Alternatively, you can click add component and you can just search your entire project for the name of the scripts. So if I type in player, it'll give you the name of everything that has player. So player input and we add it there as well. Um, now to get the specific settings working as it was there, I'm basically limiting the jump height. I'm reducing everything here by half and wall slide speed as well and that's essentially how I got it like that oh and collision mask to obstacle so uh, one more thing we'll do for this video um, is to actually add a box collider to this guy over here so 
uh, we're gonna want this to collide with that character over there and we will add a component called a box collider 2d so search box collider 2d and you attach it basically in the same way as a script um, so we have this component on it note that the box collider automatically figures out its sizing based on the size of the sprite so because the character is pretty much square we don't really have to do anything else for that uh, you could bring it in a little bit if you wanted uh, basically more tight collision um, but for our purposes right now that'll be perfectly fine uh, now I believe if we hit play here and we try to jump on that character then not uh, they will collide but it's not going to stop our player from uh, basically passing through it and that's because it's on a different layer but let's actually go ahead and do some science here so I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna turn out I think it will pass through him yep okay he passed straight through him as if he didn't exist uh, so we'll go back to Jeffrey the dude number one that guy over here and I'm gonna set him to an obstacle and now as we jump at it it should stop us from moving so jump at it and well it actually became a wall so part of uh, that script we imported the 2d platformer controller includes wall jumping so if you really want a head start on that kind of control system it, it's probably a good package for you to use honestly so I'll try to get on top of him this time and jump and eh, that's not gonna quite work there now say that you don't want this character over here to be treated as a wall that you can wall jump off of as well or just basically an immovable object that stops your character dead in its tracks well what we can actually do is move this character off of the obstacle layer and add rigid body 2ds to both of them so i'm going to add a rigid body 2d component here and a rigid body 2d component there and what this allows um, to happen inside of unity is for these game objects to take part inside of the physics system of unity so you'll notice that there are settings like mass for these different characters and we're not going to get too much into all of these settings but depending on the mass of an object you collide with the reactions that these two rigid bodies have on each other are going to differ so I've gone ahead and increased the size of the fence obstacle and I also slapped on a player script to this guy over here but not player input and that's just so that we have access to the controller 2D script so that when this guy hits this uh, basically the fence down there it'll stop just like the main player would. And normally you would probably use some custom collision scripts or collision detection. So in order to make this scenario work, a few things I went ahead and did was add a rigid body 2D to the guy over here on the right. And he also has a box collider still. So what this means is that the rigid body 2D is going to be able to calculate physics uh, whenever this box collider comes into contact with another box collider. And for the fence, I added a rigid body to that too, set it to static so that it's immovable, but it still serves as a collidable rigid body. And our main character also has a rigid body 2D uh, so that it can collide with this other rigid body. As long as the objects have rigid bodies, they'll be able to collide with, with each other in one way or another, and the settings will determine how the physics works on that. So without really getting too much into the specifics of how all this physics calculations is working, let's just go ahead and play and show how on a very basic level it's pretty easy to set up game physics within your Unity project. So obviously the original player can float on top of this fence because it's still colliding using the controller 2D script. But using rigid body 2D, I believe that would stop it as well. And the proof for that is that our other guy over here, which has exactly the same box collider and rigid body 2D components, uh, is in fact colliding on top of this fence. The fence isn't moving because it's a static, ob it's a static rigid body. And therefore, our guy over here is just sitting on top of the fence. Now, because these are both rigid bodies, I can walk into that other rigid body and move him. I can also jump on top of him and knock him over to the side. Now, one thing you might think is kind of weird for a sprite-based game is that, obviously, our character is able to rotate, and that's pretty weird. We have some issues here, of course. So, one other thing we can do 
to get that more sprite 2D game feel is actually to freeze constraints on rotation so that the sprite can't rotate and it will always be facing straight up. So let's go ahead and apply that to both the player and the other game object clone, Jeffrey the Dude number one, and we will hit play again. So our characters still fall to the fence, but as I jump on top of him, he does not rotate. I do not rotate in any way whatsoever. And that's going to give us a pretty quick and easy example of using box colliders and rigid bodies, as well as a player controller inside of Unity 2D. A lot of components and calculations going on in the background, but this is one of the things Unity does pretty well for us without even uh, really needing to dive too far into coding. Now, obviously for pixel based games, uh, there are problems with using rigid bodies. It gives you the look of something much closer to a modern 2D game like Angry Birds, and that may not be what you're shooting for at all. So as an alternative to using rigid bodies entirely, you can just use box colliders and then script how different box colliders are going to interact with each other, such as having movement stop 100% when it comes into contact with something, basically just not allowing it to move forward anymore. If you do want to use rigid bodies within your game for the sake of collisions, one important area you're going to want to look more into is Edit, Project Settings, and then Physics 2D. Notice that it has gravity up here at the top, which is set in the negative y direction, so everything will fall down in your game by default. But more importantly, the layer collision matrix, if you do want to organize your different game objects into different layers, and set what is able to collide with what, then this is where you do it. As you add in custom layers, they'll appear here too. But if you don't want your player to be able to interact with the UI layer, then you should uncheck right here so that it can't do that. So when we get to scripting, one thing we'll talk about how to do is how to check if you're coming into collision with another layer and if that layer should stop your character from moving or not in 2D scripting for non-rigid body based games. Uh, but for now that's going to be it for the basics on box colliders, rigid bodies, 2Ds, and uh, the player controller for Unity 2D games. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, hopefully you found this helpful and I'll see you in my future content.